So how do you make a picture with the laser cutter using K40 Whisperer? Well, once again, we're going to go to Inkscape. And like I said earlier, we're going to recommend using Inkscape version 0.92 or later. It produces an SVG file that's compatible with K40 Whisperer. And it'll just save you a lot of hassle down the road. So how do we do this? We start with a blank document in Inkscape. We're going to do File, Import, and we're just going to import up an image. And this is an image that I downloaded from Wikimedia Commons. I'm going to leave it as embedded. If you embed the image, it makes it part of the SVG file. It's still a, It makes it a PNG file that's embedded inside of the SVG file, so you don't have to worry about having both files available at all times if you link it. Um, and you delete the image file, the SVG will no longer work. So we're going to say OK there. So there's the file I have. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And let's, so the what we're going to do is we're going to make this the size we want it to be. Um, so I'm going to, I want to make this a relatively small uh, project. So I'm going to make it, let's say, two and a half well okay so 50 millimeters tall and I want to lock this so that I change both dimensions at the same time and so if I change the the height the width is gonna also scale so now I that scale I can zoom back way back in here and now I have a so the width is 60 millimeters and the height is 50 millimeters and I have my image in Inkscape. Um, what I can do now, because you're in Inkscape, you can also add vector to this. We don't have to, but I can. So I have, I'm gonna create a box, and apparently the box I created last time was filled, so I'm gonna have to go in and do object, fill and stroke, and I'm gonna X out the fill. And I want this to, I want this to be a cut, so I'm gonna cut the picture out afterwards so I'm going to make it a the make it full red 255 red and this this line is is extra thick so I'm going to make it thin so I can just cut out around around this image Here. I'm using the arrow keys to move it around a little bit to get my cut in the right place. So now what I could do, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna so this box has a little bit of a round on it. So I'm gonna grab this and I can grab this this handle here and, and change the radius. I'm gonna make it totally square. And then I'll be able to go back and make this cut right where the image is. And it's going to snap to the size of the image here, I hope. So that's snapped to the height, I believe. Oh, yep, it's snapped to both. So, so right now I have my image, and I just have a vector cut around it, so I can cut out the image after I, after I engrave it. And the one thing we're going to want to do after this is go ahead and change the size of the page the document properties resize to the selection or drawing so I don't have anything selected so it's gonna resize it to everything and that's gonna make it just the exact same size as the box that I put around there once again make sure my custom size is set to either millimeters or inches that'll tell K40 Whisper what the size in real physical units should be and that is I should be all set I should be able to bring this into K40 Whisperer um, I'll have the cut around the outside. So I can bring this right into K40 Whisper. It's going to interpret the colors in terms of dent in terms of intensity and and we should be able to get an image out of this. So let's do a save as and I'm going to save it as an image file image demo. Let's say save and we're ready to go into K40 Whisperer. 
We could initialize the laser cutter right now, but I'm going to skip that step for a moment and open the design file. It's image demo. And the images are going to come in as one bit per pixel. That's either a pure black or pure white. And that's the default setting in K40 Whisperer because that's the laser uh, setting or the way the laser works is it's either on or off. The only way to get gray images out of K40 out of a K40 laser without modifying the board is to use what's called a dither or a half tone, which is using small dots to represent um, the grays where the dots are closer together for the darker grays or black and the dots are farther apart for for white so we're going to go into the raster settings and we're going to enable half tone or dither and that's going to make the display display back into the grayscale image and the image that's displayed is just what i said it's gray it's not actually displaying the dithered or halftone image but it's dis displaying it as gray to indicate that it's going to try to represent the grays using a using a halftone. Uh, there's a few other options in here. Um, you can engrave bottom up. What that's going to do is it's going to make the laser jump to the bottom of the image and then engrave from the bottom up. Um, typically it'll engrave from the top down. Um, that's just an option you have. The resolution um, so that's how, that's how small each individual dot in the dither is going to be. Um, 500 DPI seems to work good. It's if you go to a thousand DPI, it, you end up with a, a lot more uh, pauses in the in the rastering um, as as the data is being sent to the laser, just because there's a lot of there's a bottleneck in the USB cable. Um, the next few options are a little more complicated. Um, what this does is it adjusts how how quickly the colors the the grays change from dark to light. And what I've done is I've set it up with all the defaults to work for something that would be kind of a general picture on a piece of wood. I tried a few different pieces of wood uh, types of wood to to see what would happen. These settings seem to work well um, if if you want to mess with them you can basically what what's going on here is this slope black is changing the slope of this uh, left hand side of the curve so what this curve is it's is it's dark to white and dark to white on both axes and it's basically the output level versus the input level so the input level is on the on the horizontal axis and and increasing the slope here makes the transition to white quicker so if you engrave an image and the darks you can't tell the difference between a, a medium dark and a very dark it all looks black then you want to increase this slope and that's that's essentially the the that's the main thing that I found in in when we were when I was engraving images is that the the very dark colors kind of all blend together unless unless you do some um, adjustment here and that's that's where this default setting is this goes to 2.5 the slope white is is the other on the other end it's the slope up here and you have to have that set to something um, so that the that the black slope has an effect if you if you set to if you set that to one which is essentially no no change to the dithering it uh you this the black slope has no effect either so with a lot of experimenting i came up with these settings the transition is just how quickly or how abruptly that that transition occurs so if, if um the default is 3.5 if if I increase that, it, it makes this corner sharper, and you can make it less sharp. Um, like I said, this these these default settings were were based on a lot of experimenting with a few different materials, trying to come up with something that would that would work for somebody out of the box. Come in, don't change anything, just turn on the halftone dither, engrave something quickly, 
and it should look reasonably well. There's a lot of messing around and, and tweaking that can be done in here um, to, to, to your liking or to your material. Um, you may find that something works better than another. Um, I guess I skipped over the scan line step. Basically, that's the distance the laser head travels in the Y direction for each scan line. So it's going to move to the right and it's going to move down 0 0.002 inches. Then it's going to move to the left and cut and then it's going to go down. So that's how many. And, and the minimum number there is is one one thousandth of an inch. Um, and, it, and you can go all the way up to about 60 thousandths of an inch. So that's like an, a sixteenth of an inch. So you can have pretty big gaps. And if you want to do some cross hatching, um, you can only do it horizontal, but that depending on what you're looking for, that might be something you want to do. But I guess I, I have these all back set to the defaults, except I have, I've selected the half tone dither to make it look grayscale. So then we can close that settings dialog. So we initialize the laser. And then again, I'm going to unlock the rail so I can move it manually. Now I have the position of the laser head where I want it to be. I'm going to increase the raster engrave speed to 150 millimeters per second. And once again, I'm going to lower the vector cut to 8. And we'll click raster engrave and see what happens. It's going to take a moment moment to calculate all of the required data. Um, it's going to pre-process as much data as possible so that there's not a lot of processing going on while the laser is cutting. Now that that is complete, we can move down to vector cut. I'm going to increase the power output to about 10 milliamps from the laser. And then we press vector cut. And then we have our engraved picture.